this is the part nobody talks about. Having to clean all the, the guts. We're packing things up so we can hit the road again and head a little farther north. As you can tell by my hair, it is quite humid today. Yeah, but it's not 105 degrees right now, so that's helpful. Yeah, this is a great little campground if you guys are cutting through for 24 bucks a night. The sites are far apart. We will definitely come back here and maybe hang out a few days when it's not so warm, that's for sure. Yeah, this has been, this has been a really nice stop and there's nobody here but us. Yeah, that's the bonus. There's hardly anybody here, so that is really cool. Now, remember there is a lake. There's also a playground for kids. There's hiking trails. There's a lot to do when you're here, so it's pretty cool. All right, let's finish packing it up so we can get a little farther north. to hit the road to put some bugs on the windshield and now he has to come out here and scrub them back off yeah I, I don't know what we hit but I don't know what bugs leave those kind of guts when you hit them and let me tell you if you don't get to them right away like I didn't and they sat for three days marinating in the Oklahoma heat they bake on and it's even tougher to get them off so I thought you guys would be interested in the campground we've been hanging out at the last couple of days it is another coe park which we love of course this one is 24 bucks a night with the access pass it makes it 12 bucks a night mm -hmm. and it is a nice little park we are on a dam on a lake and there is a ton of boating activity fishing and it's a very clean very well kept park the sites are all paved on the side of the campground we're on, there are no trees, not much shade. But if you go to the other side, if you're in a huge shady area, tons of trees, either side is immaculate, so well taken care of. Yeah, it's really nice here. Other than, I wish we had a better view of the lake, but you can see it all around us um, from inside the rig. You can, you can get a better view. Yeah, and luckily for us, the temps dropped. Yeah. We had a storm blow through last night, which really dropped the temps. So I woke up and when I, threw my shoes on this morning to go out the door. It was barely 70. Yeah, and I've been out here probably for an hour washing the, the Jeep in the front of the rig, and look, I'm not even lactating. <laughs> Shirt's not soaked, so that's a good thing. So our time here is done. We have had a great time here. It was really relaxing. Very. Um, but tomorrow we head out. We're doing our preps to get underway. If you want to see where we're going to land at our next destination, make sure you watch till the end because we're going to show you. <laughs> it's one of our favorite places. It is. We get a lot of questions about navigation and what we use to navigate. So today I'm going to talk about it just a little bit. Our main navigator is a Garmin 770. There is a new Garmin out there, the 780, if you wanted to get the upgraded version, but you can still find some of the older ones at a much cheaper price if you're looking for them. Now, the way we navigate is I actually will tell Phil if there's a turn coming up, especially and mainly if we're on a busy freeway. So if we're on a busy interstate, and I think the worst one for us so far has been when we were in Nashville because it seemed like every time we merged onto a freeway, there would be a fork and Phil would have to immediately get all the way over in four lanes of heavy traffic. Yeah. So what I normally do is I'll give him a turn warning about five miles out and then again about two and then about one, just so if he needs to get over into another lane, he can start preparing for that. Yeah, and normally I'm concentrating on the vehicles around me um, so that I don't inadvertently hit somebody or somebody doesn't cut me off and then I don't see them. So it's good the way that we work so I can concentrate on the driving and she just says go wherever. She's been doing that for 31 years anyway telling me where to go. Telling him where to go and normally he pays attention and he goes there but not always. Now everybody navigates a little differently. Some people we know the driver does all the navigating. They check the route the night before and they do it all and you know the passenger doesn't do anything but maybe look for a rest stop or a fuel station along the way. The way we do it I don't know. I don't know anybody else who does it like we do, to no. be honest. So let us know down in the comments, how do you guys navigate? Is it only the driver that pays attention to the route? 
does the passenger also help choose the route? Do they, do you actually navigate for the person driving? How do you guys do it? I would love to hear the differences. Tonight we will be stopping at a Walmart or somewhere along the way. We're not sure where we're stopping yet. Um, just for an overnight. We're kind of going to be out in the middle of nowhere, so it may be a rest stop. We may not actually be able to find a Walmart when we want to stop. The good thing about today and being that we're not going to a park and plugging in is we're going to get to flex our solar and our Battleborn batteries today. So solar is activated. We will charge or keep a charge all the way to our destination, and then hopefully we'll keep that state of charge up um, and that it stays cool. We won't have to run the generator. Just so you know, we are not afraid to run our generator all night long if we need to turn on the air. We've done it before and we will do it again. And we've also turned our generator on while we're driving. It's 1.47 and we actually hit the road right around 10 o'clock this morning. And we haven't really stopped yet. So what I did was I went to all states here on my phone and I checked the apps for upcoming rest stops just to see if they'll want it to stop, stretch his legs, we can walk his. Um, and just figure out what, how far out the next one is. So our next rest stop is in about 30 miles. And then after that, it would be like 130 miles. So we're going to stop at the one coming up. 30 miles for the win. Yeah. I want to make sure that everybody gets the stops they need because I can just get up and go to the bathroom whenever I want, but Giz and Phil cannot. So Nobody I, likes a bragger. <laughs> I have to make sure they're well taken care of. If you're already on the road, you're probably already doing that for your driver. But for those of you who haven't gone full time yet, those, that is why I love All Stays. And somebody asked me why I go to All Stays instead of the RV Life app if I already own it. And to be honest, it's because it's just habit. That's the way it was when I started. And the RV Life app did not exist yet so all of that stuff wasn't available we're here at this not so fancy not so clean rest stop letting giz get a break and walk around a little bit and phil get a break from driving at this point my goal will be as far as navigation is to let phil know when we have stops coming up that we could actually stay the night of course we still probably have a couple more hours yet that we're gonna drive just because it's so early in the day and phil's still feeling pretty good so, but as Walmarts come up or any other rest stop comes up where we could actually stay overnight, I will let him know and he can decide if we're stopping or if we're going to keep going to the next one. So, of course, I'll let him know how far the next one is. You know, if the next one's 200 miles, then he might want to stop anyway, even though he's feeling good. So, the next rest stop and truck stop is about six miles down the road. Love's is right after that. So, we can stop there for the night or if we keep going... The next one is going to be um, the next rest stop is going to be right inside the Colorado border, and that is 91 miles. So okay. we can keep going, or um, we can stop here. Well, let's check this one out first, and then if if it's doable, if it's not doable, then we'll press on. Okay. But if it's if it's good to go, then we can go ahead and. You want to stop for the night? Yeah, we can try it. Yeah. All right, so it is 2.41. So we'll check out this rest stop and see if we're stopping. Um, there's still some daylight left, but Phil can only sit for so long with his knee and his back, so he has to get out and move around. So we'll check out this truck stop, see what it looks like. So this rest stop isn't really a rest stop. No. It's actually a picnic area. So we're thinking this is not where we want to stop. No, I'm not, uh, I'm not feeling the vibe here. Yeah, it's no. kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It would probably be fine, but there are no lights. It'll be, I mean, we're literally out in BFB. So we are going to head to the next one, which actually has restrooms. And so it'll probably have lights at night and legit parking places. But the only caveat of that one is it says it's frequently closed. So it is 40 miles from here. If that one's closed, then our next one is 89 miles. So yeah, this, this looks like it's got a, uh, it's got some historical markers or something, so there's people that are constantly stopping. And in fact, there's a family here that just stopped right in the middle of the road. Uh, yeah, literally. And got out. So there's no rhyme or reason. Um, so there'd be people coming in and out of here. I don't. I don't. I just. We'll keep. We'll keep going forward. We made it to the next truck stop, which is much larger than the first one. It does have bathrooms and it has a lot more um, parking spots for trucks. But Phil has decided to push on. So. Yeah. The next place that we could possibly stop is 44 miles from here, so we're going to hit that one. So, you know, about an hour-ish, 
um, and see what's going on with that one and see if that's where we want to stop. And that's going to take us into Colorado, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah, this, I mean, we, we lost an hour driving, so it's really, it's early. It's only 3.50, um, so about another hour I'll be ready to stop. So, but just keep pushing on. The more we drive today, the less we have to drive tomorrow. That's my thought process. <laughs> I'm just going to drive, drive. So we finally found our resting spot for the night. Yep. We are off 25 in Colorado, just north of Trinidad at a rest stop. It's a little loud right now. We got the windows open just because it is nice outside for a change. The 18 wheelers are running their ACs, so. There was a sign that said no overnight parking, but there are a ton of reviews that say people parked here overnight. Worst that can happen is we have to move in the middle of the night. I guess we, we keep clothes on that we can make a quick trip to the driver's seat. <laughs> I think we'll be fine. Um, and to top it all off, we are at 100% um, state of charge on Speaking our batteries. Of top off. Yeah. Um, so our solar kept us topped off all day. We were in sun most of the day yeah. uh, traveling. So um, we are good. No need to run the generator. And we're about to fire up the microwave That's right. on Watch the batteries. This. No, no generator. Oh, let me clear it. <laughs> that's why we got the batteries. Well, that's why I got the batteries. So don't have to worry about starting the generator just to heat up dinner, which I always try to keep leftovers in the fridge for travel days when I know we're going to have to overnight somewhere like this. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to see what we were pulling as far as solar today. Um, Let me stop this so you can hear us. <laughs> but it was enough that it kept us topped off. We unplugged at about, I think, 930 9 this yeah, morning. Yeah, about 930 ish. Um, and it is now 5.18 and we lost an hour, so 6.18, so roughly um, almost nine hours unplugged, so that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that any day. Yeah, I think we did pretty good. So we're going to hunker down here for the night. So as you can see, we survived the night and we did not get kicked out of our rest stop. No, in fact, there must be old signs, but the reviews said that you could stay here. And when we woke up this morning, the parking lot was full of 18-wheelers uh, and other RVers, yeah. so good spot. So we were not here alone, that was for sure. We did get a um, parking spot right next to the grass, so we were able to open one of our slides in the back, and we're gonna close that up in just a second. Before we get, leave our rest stop here in Colorado, I'm just doing a quick walkabout just to make sure um, everything is still connected, nothing was messed with. Um, just do kind of a walk around. We had this bedroom slide out, as you can see on the curbside, so. We didn't, we weren't in anybody's way. We didn't even put the jacks down, so we just popped that out. Scully survived. He slept good last night. Um, but other than that, we're ready to go. And as you can see, not many left. We are probably about 20 minutes or so away from getting underway. We finally made it to one of our favorite campgrounds. Yeah, we're uh, situated in the foothills of the Colorado mountains here at the Air Force Academy. Yeah, we really, really love it here. We pulled in and the, it just smelled awesome. <laughs> I could smell like the pine and the fresh air and it's just so relaxing here. It is one of my favorite places. It, it is. And in fact, one of our subscribers uh, came out when we pulled in and he said, we're here because you recommended it. So that's pretty cool. And uh, we tried to extend because we only got three short days here. And of course, they're booked. Yeah, they stay pretty, pretty full. Now, when we're here in Colorado Springs, um, Phil grew up here. At, well, I shouldn't say grew up here because he is an army brat, but he did graduate <laughs> from high school here. So we have family here. So once we get here, normally the camera gets put down and we go and visit, you know, all of our friends and family. So we have been doing that. But this morning, we are going to try and get a little exercise in before we get back into friends and family mode. And we're probably not going to get very far because this high <laughs> altitude, just standing here, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble breathing. Um, but the high altitude, we, we came back one year um, a long time ago and when we were actively running. 
and we were training for a half marathon and we said okay you know we got to get out and go run the next day get our day. training runs in so the next morning <laughs> the day after we got here we got up we went to this park and we ran we we're all motivated we got maybe 200 feet and died <laughs> So, so I'm expecting a slow death today. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I'm starting to train again to get back into 5Ks, 10Ks. I, I'm not committed to a half yet. Um, so I don't expect my feet to move too fast today, um, but I am going to move them. And I'm, Phil... I'm committed for her doing a half <laughs> as well. She's going to run for us both because I can't run. But I am jumping on the bike today. I'm going to test out yes. my, my shoulders, see how it does with that pressure on the handlebars and the the, the short small bumps uh, it will it will be a a dirt road uh, or dirt trail that I'm on so we'll see how it goes yeah it's pretty flat so we just want to kind of see how far he can push it now yeah. we have been here once before since we started RVing and it was actually when Phil tried to kill me on the mountain bike <laughs> so if you haven't seen that one it shows a little bit more of the park I'll put the link down below for that but in the meantime check this out because we're gonna take you a little bit through the park down to the trail <laughs> My ass is Jimmy, and I remember that ride really well. Yeah, it was actually in one of our, um, the opening for our review video for yeah. the past two years. So and it wasn't that bad. She it just, was that bad. She just not, she doesn't ride bikes like I do. So it was pretty funny. Yeah, I'm not one to fly over handlebars <laughs> like Phil used to do all the time. Yeah, n not anymore. No. I'm sad to say that our time here at the Air Force Academy is coming to an end. We are only able to get a spot for three days. We were lucky even to get that spot because most of the military campgrounds are closed due to COVID. So we were able to spend time with family. We had a great time here and we can't wait to come back and see everyone again. But in the meantime, we are packing up, getting ready to head for a state park. As you can see, I have the washer full of clothes. I washed everything because we're going to be without sewer at this campground. It's electric only without sewer and water. And then after that, we're going to be doing a lot of boondocking. We do have electricity at the next campground. So as you can see, I'm about to put my clothes in the dryer and they are going to hang out and wait until we get there and I'll, I'll dry them there. But all of the laundry is caught up, so I don't have to worry about that. Phil is on the outside getting everything hooked up out there and uh, let's go see what he's up to. Hey right, buddy, do your thing. We do love our Scully. We picked him up last October and he's been traveling with us ever since. It is a little awkward sometimes to store him because he actually takes up a lot of space he in does. our Jeep um, because we also have our e-bikes in the back. So, but it's so much fun. We just can't get rid of him. We just love him. So I try to dress him up for the holidays. Um, he had a top hat and glasses for New Year's. Um, he has beads for Mardi Gras that are still hanging around. So we try to do all that kind of stuff with him. It's a lot of fun. It is, it's just the reaction. I love seeing in the, in the side mirror people that pass us and then they see him and then they slow back down and cameras come out yeah. and then they pass us and they're waving and smiling and yeah. thumbs up. So it's pretty cool. It lightens everybody up a little bit. Yeah, it breaks up the monotony of driving three, four hours. Yeah. So as I said, we're getting ready to leave here. And just so you know, in case you're wondering, the Air Force Academy is a military base. So you have to be affiliated with the military and have privileges to the base to use it. And it's 30 bucks a night for full hookups. And it is a wonderful campground. Yeah, this is probably one of our favorite places to come. I mean, it, you're yeah. tucked into the trees. Um, you're in, you've got the mountains behind you. 
got the sound of freedom every now and then flying over the top yeah. of you from Air Force jets. Yep. Uh, it's pretty nice. And the base itself has, of course, the Air Force Chapel, which is beautiful, and you can do services there if you would like. But it also has hiking trails, biking trails, right here on the base. You don't even have to leave the base. And it's centrally located to Colorado Springs if you want to go for all the Olympic stuff or even Denver if you want to drive north to Denver. Mm -hmm. So it's a great location. And of course, you're in the mountains, so the temperatures are fantastic right now. Yeah, and another cool bonus, I get to get my ears lowered on the base. I love it. I think this is a good place to close out this video. Go ahead and close it. <laughs> All right, so as you can see today, it was all about navigation. We use a ton of tools to navigate, and we wing it a lot. Yeah, and I'm thankful that she does wing it and lets me concentrate on actually driving Ruby and keeping her between the white lines. Yeah, that's true. And Phil gets to decide if we're just stopping somewhere for overnight when we stop based on how he's feeling, if he's tired, if his if his eyelids are closing. <laughs> and they do get heavy on longer drives. My, You know, I feel like a bobblehead. I may have said that a time or two where I'm just going from mirror to rear camera to mirror back out and I'm constantly looking at the TPMS and after a while I just start to get a get a glaze <laughs> over my eyes. We always say when the sun goes down Phil's eyes go with it. <laughs> yes they do. <laughs> That's normally what happens. All right so I'm going to put links below to all the navigational tools that we use and if you are looking for a Garmin, an RV GPS specific Garmin, um, Techno RV has the latest and greatest, which is an 890, and that bad boy has an 8-inch screen. It's a color screen. It is sweet. And if you're driving and navigating, that big old screen, you can put it up on your dash, and yeah. you can really see it very easily. So I'll send a link. Uh, I'll put a link down below for that as well in case you want to check it out. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right, thanks for watching. Make sure you find us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and we are on Our Village. The letter R village not our village <laughs> yes and you can also find a ton of info on travel and RVing on our website so head to todayissomeday.net for a lot more info yeah there's a lot of good stuff there so if you're just finding us for the first time check us out on all those different sites you'll be amazed at what you'll find and of course if you never want to miss a thing make sure you sign up for a newsletter I will send you an email once a week letting you know of new videos new blogs and also info from other RVers, other websites that I find that I think is really cool. Yeah, we like to share, we like to pay it forward. That's right. So thanks again for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell. And we'll see you on, on the, the road. road.